B'Shem Hashem Na'asev and Asliach, welcome back everyone to our weekly Zera Shimshon Shi'ur on the parasha. Today we are starting parashat Nitzavim, the Rush Hay, the fifth Ma'amar of the Zera Shimshon on the parasha. This uh, Shi'ur, like all others, are dedicated to the Rufuah Shalema of Kol Chole Am Yisrael, especially um, Mordechai Ben Turan, and also Michael. Michael Levi Ben Dina, Tinok Ben Shiran, and Tanaz Bat Gila, Sanaz Bat Gila, and Pari Bat Mohtaram, Behnaz Chaya Bat Yafa, and Yehuda Ben Ezra, and Yosef Ben Monavar. Yonatan Rafael ben Gladi Simcha and Revital Bat Gladi Revital Revital Chaya Bat Gladi Simcha Chaya Ahava Gadosh Bat Neda. The zechut of this shiur should be a melitz yosher for all those that are single to bezrat Hashem find their zivugim begarov uvizmano, and those that need children in the zechut of the zera shimshon they should be zocher to to banim zcharim banim banot bezrat Hashem begarov uvizmano. And the dedication of the is also Leilui Nishmat Zera Shimshon Harav Shimshon Chaim and Nachman Michael. The pasuk says, "Re'e natati lefanecha hayom et et hayim et hatov et hamavet et hara." The pasuk in this week's parasha, the parasha that is always, always before Rosh Hashanah, Parashat Nitzavim. I mean, the words of the parasha itself, the beginning of the parasha, the first pasukim of the parasha themselves already. Are very to to the point because we're going to Rosh Hashanah Yom Adin, preparing for judgment, preparing for forgiveness. Bezrat Hashem. And the pasuk says, "What atem nitzavim hayom kulechem lifna Hashem elokechem." You are now standing before Hashem, your God. It's a chilling feeling that this parasha is right before Rosh Hashanah always. And in this parasha, Moshe Rabbeinu tells over to Bnei Israel that look, Hakadosh Baruch Hu told you that I have put before you et hachayim et hatov, life and good, ve'et hamavet ve'et hara, death and bad. Pretty simple. Moshe Rabbeinu says Hakadosh Baruch Hu made it very simple for us. He put choices in front of us. The choices are clear. One side is. One road leads to a wondrous land of bliss and happiness and reward, and the other side is just a crater. You go straight down, nothing else. It's wrong. It's bad. So now the Zera Shimshon says, "Kashet." This is difficult, kind of. There is a difficulty in this pasuk. It should have really started by saying, "I have put before you death and bad," and then afterwards it should have said life and good. Now I know everyone's thinking, "Why? What's wrong with being saying the positive first? You know how they go? You want the good news first, or you want the bad news first? Most people always go, "Why? Good news." But smart people say bad news. I guess we'll see. We'll see. So he says, why shouldn't it say et hachayim et hatov first? I mean, sorry. Why why doesn't it say et hamavet et hara, death and bad, and then say chayim et tov, and then say life and good? That's a better order. Why does he say that's a better order? Because in our minds, why is that a better order? In our minds, why shouldn't you say the good first? Chayim tov. Be positive, and then if in case, if in case you eat non-kosher only outside, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Why can't I stop? I say, <laughs> just in case, just in case, you know. So it says, because in Midrash it says, 
Yitzchak Avinu said when in his blessings in Bereshit 27-29, Orerecha Arur Omvarechecha Baruch. Those who curse you shall be cursed and those who bless you shall be blessed. Yitzchak Avinu in his blessing mentioned the curses first and then blessing. Which tells us if Yitzchak Avinu said the bad first and then the good, that's what you follow. He said, Orerecha Arur, those that curse you shall be cursed, Umvarechecha Baruch, and those who bless you shall be blessed. So we learn from Yitzchak Avinu that really the order should be maybe the bad first and then the good. So why is does it in this Pasuk over here it says, Hachaim Vetatov, life and good, right? Hamavet Vetara, should be switched just like Yitzchak Avinu did. And then, on the other hand, not so good people were the ones who actually switched it around and said, Hachaim Atov, who did it? Ubil'am Amar Lehefech. Bil'am was the one who said the opposite. He said, those who bless you should be blessed and those who curse you should be cursed. When Bil'am was doing the brachot, Bil'am said the blessing first and then the curse. Who do you follow? Who do we follow? Yitzchak Avinu or Bil'am? Who should we follow? Yitzchak Avinu. Did you say Bil'am? I don't know where that food is from, but it's doing something to you. Bil'am makes the prophecy about Bar Kokhba defeating the Roman legions. He takes by surprise. So we follow both Bil'am and Yitzchak. We don't follow Bil'am. No, we do not follow Bil'am. No. That's clear cut. Cannot follow Bilam. But one sec. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melecha, Olam Sheha Kol, and Hiya Bid Baruch. So he says, he answers, Lefisha Tzadikim Techilatan Yisurin Vesofan Shalva. Says, why is it that Tzadikim, like Yitzchak Avinu, mentioned curses first and then blessings? says, because that's how Sadiqim see the world. The righteous see the world in a different way. They say, yes, this life is hardship. This life is hard. It's full of obstacles. But the end result is going to be great. So they're always saying the, ra, the, ra, the, 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 the bad first and then the good. The curse is first and then the blessings. Why? Because that's how they see life. Life on this world is usually difficult. You see bad things, you see atrocities, you see hardships. But the result of it later on is going to be the sakhar. Listen, let's all be honest, okay? I know that you guys probably were raised at home listening to all these like Torah tapes. Or like, sorry, sorry, I said tapes. People listening are going to be like, what are, what are tapes? Okay? <laughs> CDs, Torah CDs, or like audio. Torah audio, thank you. Or like, uh, right, not lectures, I'm not even, like when you were a kid, you know, when you were like five years old. If you were listening when you were five years old to these like Torah jams, like the Jewish Barney and stuff like that, you know? Right, don't bring names please. Not referring to anybody, just saying. Like Jewish songs. Right? And we're always talking about how mitzvot are fun, mitzvot are cool, mitzvot are da da da. They're so awesome. We love doing mitzvot. Right? And then you kind of grow up and you find out that they're not so fun. They're actually very serious. Mitzvot aren't fun. It, and in fact, actually, it, it's, it's, a, it's a part of halakha that says mitzvot, right? Mitzvot lav lehenim nitnu. They were not, the mitzvot were not given for profit and enjoyment. And that has halachic, uh, that has halachic, uh, basically, like it made, makes changes in halacha. How so? For instance, for instance, let's say somebody says, I will never benefit from a shofar again. 
Can you blow the shofar for that person on, 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 uh, on Rosh Hashanah? He made a neder. He made a swear like, I'm not benefiting from shofar again. Can you blow the shofar for this guy on Rosh Hashanah? No. Absolutely yes. yes. None of you were listening. Who am I talking to here? Who? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It was confusing. It was confusing. The reason why is because the halakha is the mitzvot were not given for our enjoyment. So you say, I'm not going to enjoy the sound of the shofar. Hashem is saying, I didn't even give it for your enjoyment. I gave you the mitzvot for you to do them. Who cares if you enjoy it or not? If you enjoy it, it's a plus. But it's a mitzvah, you're supposed to do it. Because you're supposed to do it, they were not given for your enjoyment. If you, enjoyment, which you, if you enjoy it, which you should, oh, you get double the sakhar because you're enjoying HaKadosh Baruch Hu's wisdom. That it's good for you. But they were not given for that sake. And therefore... In halacha, it makes a change. Right? <clears throat> so therefore, hachamim, tzaddikim, chasidim in this world understand that the mitzvot were not given for, their, for our enjoyment. So it, sometimes it's hard. You know, sometimes it's hard to make that choice. Wake up at this time, silihot, 40 days, wake up early. Or people that go at night, you know, stay up late at night, go to silihot, then in the morning, shacharit, da, da, da. Life of mitzvot is not easy. And it's expensive. You don't need a new talit. You need a new talit katan. You need a new this. Or shatnez check. Kosher food. You know? Lulav, uh, etrog, uh, sukkah, matzah. It's expensive. Yes, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives us bracha that we're able to do it. Baruch Hashem, it's a nes. But at the same time, it's hard. Right? Let's be honest. So tzaddikim... The way they speak, they say the negative first. That's what the Midrash says. Why? Because they know, yes, you see negative. In life, you see negativity. But ah, the reward comes later. The good comes later. So Yitzchak Avinu said, what did he say? Yitzchak Avinu said, Orerecha Aror, Umvarechecha Baruch. Those who curse you are cursed, and those who bless you are blessed. Because it's the same connotation as the negativity first and comes after, what comes afterwards is the positivity. This life is hard. It looks like curses, but later the sakhar is going to be great. Right? <clears throat> so therefore now our question becomes solid. Zerah Shemshon is asking, why is it this pasuk says, what was the pasuk? Re'en atati lefanech hayom et ha'chayim ve'et ha'tov ve'et ha'mavet ve'et ha'ra. Here the pasuk switches it. It says chayim and tov first. Mavet and ra last. If we go according to the Midrash, it should be switched the other way around. Claro? Clear so far? Okay. Didn't they just come from a parsha being cursed so they need some consolation that everything will be okay? The previous parsha was kitavo, so everything that was said was a curse. So like, they need some, some consolation, so... Could have to say something positive? Maybe on a... Okay, so you're saying because the last parsha had all the curses in it, Ben Israel needed some consolation, you know. Okay, so maybe on a psychological level, you're correct. Maybe Moshe Rabbeinu was trying to, you know, be like, relax everybody. Everything going to be okay. Right? I understand. On a psychological level, you might be right. That could be an answer. I like that answer. Very nice. Hazak Baruch, you can go home now. <laughs> <clears throat> However, he answers. Ve'yesh lomar. Tehacha lo haya efshar lomar tchilat ha'mavet v'tara. Here, it was not possible to say mavet first, death and, and, and bad first, and then the blessings. Although it is the way of tzaddikim to do it that way, but here it couldn't. Why? Deim ken, because if he had done so, hava mashma shelechar sheba hara, yesh takana nizkot betov. It says you would have thought it would have been implied that even after one has already done the ra, has already sinned and evil has come to pass, meaning the bad has been done, you would have thought yesh takanal izgot betov. There may be a simple way to rectify it and basically get the tov still. You've done the bad, you would have thought, oh, you know what? Mavet and ra, when you say mavet and ra first, and then hachaim atov. A person would have thought, okay, I've done all the bad and the mavet and the ra, but oh, maybe I can now, you know, maybe there is a way to rectify all of those. 
He says, Beze eno. That's not true. Shele olam sarich sha adam yagdim tefila la tzara. He's not saying, by the way, he's not saying that, oh, when you do something wrong, you can't do teshuva. That's not what he's saying. What he's saying is, Shele olam sarich sha adam yagdim tefila la tzara. Person has to always pre daven. You have to pre engage yourself in tefila before the hardship comes. A person should never wait for things to go wrong and then be mitpalel. A person shouldn't wait for things to go wrong and then say, Oh Hashem, now I know why I made those mistakes because of this, because of that, because of that. I should have known. We have to preemptively go to this war and preemptively daven for things not to happen. A person has to always feel like a prime example. <clears throat> prime example, okay? I heard this over from Rav Orlovsky, Rav David Orlovsky in Israel. He put it beautifully. He said, imagine, think to yourself that HaKadosh Baruch Hu bases what He does and the outcomes that you will receive in your life, He bases it on how you deal with situations. Okay? For example. <laughs> you know, many people... When there is something going on in their life, when there's some kind of uh, rocky road in their life, and I'm talking everyone included, me included, this is human nature, right? Huh? Are you about to say, I need to go through this myself first? No, 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 no. When things go wrong, all of a sudden the tefillah, the fervor, the fire of that person's tefillah and the kavana becomes unbelievable. You, you go, right, the person gets squeezed, you go into the corner and you're davening with such kavana, word by word, every word, tears coming down, you know? But unfortunately, when things are okay, we can't wait for the tefillah to be over. Did I have kavana? Did I not have kavana? I heard over, I heard over from Rav Rosenblum today. He quoted from, from Rav Ben Sion Abba Shaul. It says one time Rav Ben Sion Abba Shaul was talking about the halakha of what, what if somebody misses Ya'ale Ve'avo on Yom Tov. Right? You're saying it's filah or Birkat Amazon and you forgot to say Ya'ale Ve'avo. He started to cry. People around him asked him, well, why are you crying? He's like, I don't understand how someone could miss saying Ya'ale Ve'avo on Yom Tov. How, do you, how does that even happen? How do you forget that it's Yom Tov? <laughs> you like... You know, there is halachot, for instance, you know, there's two uvish arechas in Shema. There's two uvish arechas in the whole Shema, right? Yes or no? People are not nodding. There's two uvish arechas, right? I'm sure this has happened. I'm sure this has happened, that you're, you're in Shema, you go uvish arecha, and then you don't know if it's the first uvish arecha or the second uvish arecha. Like, right? Exactly, you don't know, you don't know if you go Leman, you, you, or do you go Bahayayim Shamoa? You don't know which one you do. By the way, the halakha is you go back to the first one. Really? Right, yes. So this way it's a sure thing that you, you did it. Now, 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 now. All of you smiling, thinking to yourselves, oh God, I just did that five minutes ago. <laughs> we have to understand, people spend half an hour saying Shema. There are people that spend half an hour saying Shema. You want to go see Rabbi Eliyahu Netanini on how he says Shema? You think people like that get confused whether it's the first Uvish Arecha or the second Uvish Arecha? They, don't nev they never get confused because Shema is real to them. It's real. They're opening Shemaim when they're saying every single word. They're, they're next to the Kisa Kavod. You know, imagine. Imagine, okay? Imagine you're, you're, you're a nice 16-year-old kid in Beverly Hills today. Because you're so nice, you want a Tesla from your father. Right? Right? I want to be, be in with the times today. <laughs> you're 16 years old, you go to Beverly High, right? And you, want, and, you want, and you want a Tesla. Do you think when you talk to your dad about the Tesla, you go, Dad, can you please buy me a... Would that ever happen? You would never forget. You would never forget what you were about to ask, ask for, would you? You would never forget. 
So how is it when we say Shema, we forget where we were, whether we were Uvish Arecha or the second one, the first one. That's what Rabbi Benzion Abba Shaul was saying. How do you forget Ya'ale Ve'yavu? It's Yom Tov. Like you're in Yom Tov. You're in a holy day. You're on Sukkot. You're in Pesach. You're, you're in Rosh Chodesh. How do you forget? That's the zone they're in. We have to recognize the power that we have. The kavana that we're supposed to have in a tefillah. The way we're supposed to pray in a tefillah. It shouldn't just be a routine. We're doing something. We're doing something extremely powerful. Extremely powerful. We have to take that moment very, very seriously. Very seriously. So, Zerah Shimshon is saying, tefillah is everything. You have to prepare before something happens. Why should it be that when something happens negative in somebody's life, then the tefillah becomes bekavana? So Rav, Rav David Ar Orlovsky used to say, if you pray with that same passion when things are good in your life, if those tears are still coming down your eyes when things are great in your life, you're davening tishkon betoch Yerushalayim ir HaGodesh. You're davening HaKadosh Baruch Hu, bring back the Beit HaMikdash and you cry because you want the Beit HaMikdash. Laminim wa lamalshinim HaKadosh Baruch Hu, destroy the enemy, your enemies. And you're crying because you want peace in the world. If you cry when things are good for you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, wow, look how connected he is to me now when things are good. I don't need to cause any trouble for him. I only cause trouble because the only time I get a connection with this guy is because when he's, some, he's got some trouble going on in his life. The only time he pays attention to me and talks to me sincerely and cries to me sincerely is when things are wrong, unfortunately. So fine, if that's what it takes for me to have a conversation with you, for my child to be in my private chambers with me, if that's what it takes, then so be it. But then if we train ourselves and we train, so to speak, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so to speak, Kav Yachol, that no, even when things are good, I'm still in your private chambers. I still daven be kavana. I still daven with passion. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, there's no reason for me to give him any problems. Think back. Chazal tell us that why was Sarai Menu Agara? Why was Rivka Menu Agara? Why couldn't Sarai Menu and Rivka Menu Le'aymenu? Why couldn't they give birth? Why couldn't Rachel Menu give have children? Why? Why? Chazal tell us because HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants tefillah tam shel tzadikim. He wants the tefillah of tzadikim. He loves to hear from his children. He loves to hear from us. He wants us to be connected to him. So he says, if over here, at this time, atem nitzavim hayom, when like you said, when already the curses were already mentioned in last week's parasha, and Bnei Israel are nervous, about what could happen, the punishments that could come out. Moshe Rabbeinu is telling them, you have to be preemptive when it comes to this. Prepare, be ready before it. Don't let the bad things happen and then think about davening for them to go away. Do the right things now so they don't come. So he's saying, if the Pasuk would have said, Chaim v'atov, after Mavet, people would have thought, oh, Mavet and Ra, and then there's Chayom et Tov, you know, there's, there's death and good. And then if you do, maybe, yes, there's still Chayim and Tov. So Moshe Rabbeinu switched it. He said, no, you need to put the Chayim and Tov first. In the times of Chayim and Tov, you have to be preemptive. Don't let the bad come and then start praying for it to go away. Make sure it never comes. Stay in the Chayim and the Tov. Stay there. Be preemptive. That's when you take the opportunity. Don't think that when it comes, it's going to be easy to get it, all, get it done. He's going to explain now. Am I making it clear? Wait, Shil what were you saying about Rachel and Minu, why she didn't have children? It says all, the, all of our matriarchs and patriarchs, Tzadikim, they couldn't have children just because Hashem wants the tefillah of Tzadikim. He wanted them to pray. That's how important that connection is. We don't realize how much HaKadosh Baruch Hu just wants to be connected to us. Bezrat Hashem, you're going to have children. Soon, all of you, Bezrat Hashem. You're going to have children. I'm, 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 I'm getting teary just saying it. 
You don't understand what it means when your child talks to you. When you're a parent, there's no greater nachat when your child comes and just wants to talk. Not because there's issues, chas v'shalom, no, just wants to talk. Abba, I want to share this with you. You know what happened here? You know what happened there? You know what great nachat there is? Or, or when, when your child wants something from you, it's the greatest nachat. You know that they need you and they're still dependent on you. You know that they want you to be their father, their mother. There's no greater joy. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, Banim atem. You are my children. I love you. I want to be connected to you. And that's, that does not mean, please come once a year on Rosh Hashanah and really daven on Rosh Hashanah with all your might. Come on Yom Kippur and daven without... No. We have to pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and be with Him the entire year. Rosh Hashanah cannot become a routine. It cannot. Yes, it is a time that is auspicious for tefillot, for teshuvah, for change, yes. But that doesn't mean a person cannot do that throughout the year either. You know, I, we, we said this when we were doing Sha'ara Teshuvah. Why wait till Yom Kippur and then go ask Mechila from people? Why? Like, okay, you did something wrong to somebody in March. What do you, like, what? You go, okay, fine. It could be like for like a month you're upset. After that, you're like, if, if I go and apologize, no, no, no. Erev Yom Kippur, perfect. Erev Yom Kippur, I'm going to go and be like, Mechila. <laughs> right? And the guy's back is to the wall. He's thinking, it's Erev Yom Kippur. <laughs> of course I forgive you. <laughs> thinking I'm a Russia. You know? Why, why should it be that way? I mean, it's good. We should be forgiving, of course. <laughs> but but, they don't, it's like... right, but why, why should we do that? Why can't we just, why can't we just be mevater? It's unbelievable. You know, the, the koach of vatran. To be mevater means to, to how, do you, how, do you, how do you translate? Yeah, in English. Let go. To, to let go. But there's, there's, a, there's a stronger word for it. Huh? No, you have, to, you have to be able to let go. There's koach in letting go. There's so much koach in letting go. Listen, what are we asking from HaKadosh Baruch Hu on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur? What are we asking of him? What do we ask of HaKadosh Baruch Hu on Yom Kippur? What do we ask of him? No, to, to, let go. to let go. We want HaKadosh Baruch Hu to let go. That's what we want. To be mater. You know, his honor. Every single time we did things, chas v'shalom, chilul Hashem. Every time things were done that were... That were Disrespectful to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, bringing degrading His honor. We come on Yom Kippur. I'm sorry. Just let it go, please. Let it go. You know. So we have to also be mater. Hakadosh Baruch Hu says, "If I let go, you have to also learn to let go. Why can't you let go? Why are you holding a grudge? It happened in March. Why are you waiting till now? Why couldn't you let go in March? It's very important. These things matter. Back to what we're saying." I, I, got, I got to say this line one more time. It's, it's a beautiful line. A person should always, always pray before any impending troubles come. We shouldn't wait for troubles to happen and then pray. Why? Do things right so the troubles don't come. Moreover, Chachamim say, it says a door, it's talking about a heavenly door in Shamaim. A heavenly door that has been closed cannot be quickly opened. Same way, same thing we're saying. Preemptively, do things while the door is open. When those doors close, it's harder to fix. It's harder to open. Because of this, he first said chayim, and then he said tov. So that they, who, they, they could dedicate themselves, the Bnei Israel, each individual should dedicate themselves to the chayim and tov before the bad come. 
עוד יש להקשות על הפסוק. He says, but there's difficulty with this verse again. דלפי מאי דאמרינה מפרק כמה תענית, because in פרק, in the first chapter of תענית, in חט עמוד בית, it says, דחייה אברחמנה סובעה לחייהו דיהיב. That when HaKadosh Baruch Hu brings sustenance into the world, He grants it to the living. Hold on one second. Okay, I actually had planned to just skip one little paragraph here, so I'm just going to go ahead, just because we won't have time. Going to go to the second part. Says Vadain We still have to see the Vishlam Aresha Dikra Nicha. Says because the beginning of this pasuk is clear. Shemitchila Yiten Lo Hachayim. Because in the beginning, Hashem will first grant life to one who obviously. To one who does teshuva, ve'achar kach yosif latet lo hatov. After the chayim, he will add upon that the tov, the good. So a person does teshuva, Hashem grants him life, and then after that, he'll add on to it the tov that comes in the life. Umishumachi amar kara et chayim et hatov, and that's why it says life and goodness. Aval sevet echral onicha, but the ending of the pasuk doesn't match up well. Det hamavet ve'tara. It says, death and bad. Okay, you could say a chayim atov because, hey, I will grant you life and goodness. You will have life, you will live, you will have longevity, and I will give you goodness in that life. And then it says, hamavet vetara, death and bad. There's no bad that comes after death. Death is death. Is death. And you can't really say, oh, it's talking about later, olam haba. No, it's talking about death, physical death here. Like the chayim. It says, chayim v'etatov. I will give you life and good in this life. So the death should be also connected to the ra. What kind of ra, what kind of bad could come out of death, uh, after death? There is no bad after death. Death is death. Lo aleinu. That's impossible. After the person is dead, won't know between bad or good. He's dead. And you cannot say it's talking about punishment in Olam Haba in Gehinam. It's not. That the bad that it's talking about after death is not talking about Gehinam. Why? This is because the literal translation of the Pasuk is discussing this life. You always have to understand there is, there is always the literal meaning of the Pasuk. The literal meaning of the Pasuk always has to make sense also. So when it says, Chaim and Tov, okay, life and goodness in life. That's what it means. When it says death and Ra, it has to match up. So what's the Ra that comes after death? Lomar says we can explain the kavanata katuv hikach. He says this is what, what is what is meant by the evil that follows. Really, the Torah is giving us two different possibilities. What is that? Shalif amim yitelno amavid miyat. Sometimes, unfortunately, because of a person's bad doings, rishut, wickedness, and evil. He says, sometimes the retribution that Hashem gives is instant death. That's the retribution. For a person, sometimes a person's evil ways is just sudden death. But sometimes, sometimes that death doesn't come so fast. It comes after much yisurim, much hardship. Unfortunately. Shehem mar mimavit. And those yisurim, those hardships, are really worse than death itself. 
And it's brought down in Chazal that torture and hardship are, are, are not taken as easily as death. How so? This is what we learned, the, the Tnan, as we learned in Avot. A person is born in this life without, against their choice, against their will, and they're gone from this life against their will. It says in Ketuvot as well. says, Chananiah, Mishael, and Azariah that were taken by Nebuchadnezzar and the whole story of them being thrown in the fire, right? The miraculous scene of them being thrown in the fire. The Gemara says, <clears throat> if instead of throwing them in the fire and sudden death, they would have tortured them, this is the Gemara, if they would have tortured them, they would have succumbed and Chas Shalom worshipped idols. That's far it goes. This is Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. The greatest miracle happened for them. They lived through it. But it says, but if they, instead of throwing them in the fire to kill them, they would have tortured them, they would have succumbed. They were. But the Gemara is trying to say torture is very difficult even for a great tzaddikim. Death is much easier. Yisurim is hard. Hardship is hard. So, Also in the seventh perek in Baba Metziah, in uh, 86, It's talking about Rabba had healed one of the agents of the king. And then that same agent was sent to arrest Rabba. And he said, that agent said, even if those people come and kill him, he's not going to give up the whereabouts of Rabba. Because he had helped him. Rabbi had helped this agent, this soldier. So the soldier did not want to give up the whereabouts of Rabba. And he said, he proclaimed, even if they kill him, he's not going to give it up. He's not going to tell them. So the Gemara says, meaning what? In his words he was saying, if they, if they kill him, he won't say but if they torture him, he probably came in. Because through torture, people do crazy things. They can't, they can't control it. A person cannot go through so much. Right? Do we have any sentient that uh, like did that through torture? Sure. Do we know of any tzaddikim that gave in through so torture? Or that didn't give in. Where are those tzaddikim? Oh. Right, but... But what's the story of Rabbi Akiva? Think, what was the story of Rabbi Akiva? But what happened? What happened? He was being skinned alive. He was being skinned alive, and then what happened? The and then what happened? He told one of the guards, what did he say? He told one of the guards, if he takes off the, the wet towel that he had put on his heart to make it not stop, to prolong the torture, he told that soldier, if he takes it off and lets him die faster, he'll give him olam haba. Which prove, proves what point? He didn't want to be tortured anymore. Lo alenu. It's not, you know, it's not something that anyone could even talk about. So he says, So he says, Also it's brought down in the Gemara, in Gemara Yoma, about those Reshaim that were complaining in the, in the wilderness, in the Jewish nation, when they, were, when they complained to HaGadosh Baruch Hu. It says, Reshaim hayum mehulchim ad chodesh yamim. Those were that really wicked, they suffered for an entire month until they died. It says, but those, Vakesherim metu miyad, but those that were not really Reshaim, they had followed, they followed the Reshaim, they died quickly, right away. They were punished right away. Which again says that torture is worse. It's bad. 
Meaning, death is the ultimate, that's for sure. But what a person can take, it's trying to say, a person can take death over torture. That's what they would rather. One sec, let me just, it's almost finished this idea. So the beginning of the Pasuk can also be explained in this way. Meaning, the part that the life of good. One second. Ah, so so the Zerah Shimshon is saying the death and the bad, the mavet and the ra are actually two separate things. They're not connected to each other. It's not saying a person gets death and then ra. No, he's saying it's it's good and worse. Meaning, a rasha rasha gets the ra. A totally wicked person gets the ra, which is the suffering. A person that's a kasher person, okay, he did things wrong, but he, but he was pushed into it, or he, half the time he didn't want to, but he did it, it was his, whatever. <coughs> he goes the easy way. What's that, so, What's that called? That's the, there's evil evil, and then there's... So he, and here, Moshe Rabbeinu explains it as mavet vetara. Et ha mavet vetara. Death and the bad. So he was asking, how could there be bad after death? It's either death or it's death. So he's saying, no, Moshe Rabbeinu was saying it's two different things. It's two separate. Death, he's talking about sudden death. It's better than the Ra. The Ra is a, a, a slow, punishable death, so to speak, Barminan, that comes with suffering. This is, huh? In the process. In the process. So, so the Zerashim, yes, you had a question? If someone has like cancer, right? Totally Parmi no, lo aleno. So you can technically say that's his, uh, like if, if you can extrapolate what you're saying to that is because the punishment is so great, he might be able to get along about. For sure, for sure. Parmi no, lo aleno. The entire purpose, unfortunately, of Yisurim. Is, is the tikkun, right? We should never know. We should never know. No, should, no one should ever know of these things. But that's the tikkun. But I thought cancer is like, God forbid, like a slow death. So isn't that... Even, th even that is a tikkun. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't have it out for anybody. Even those reshaim that in the midbar that it says they suffered for a month before they died. Why? Because it was according to the level of their rishut. It was according to the level of their wickedness. In order for them to have the final tikkun, to go to Olam Haba, they needed that. Somebody doesn't. Somebody else doesn't. Only the, the, the passing away, that mitah, was good enough for them. That erased their sin. But somebody that was very, very wicked needed more tikkun. So it needed suffering in this world, Daminan, and the final passing. Mm -hmm. The Zerah Shimshon is explaining these things right before uh, Parashat Nitzavim altogether. Forget the Zerah Shimshon explains it, but Parashat Nitzavim has these things in it altogether because Parashat Nitzavim is the parasha that always comes before Rosh Hashanah. It's to shake us. It's to wake us up. Okay. The, uh, I think it was the Belzer Rebbe this past, yesterday, Sunday, the the Ashkenazic world started slichot yesterday. Yeah. We started so, Sunday. Right. <laughs> I, I, you're, you're, not, you're not Ashkenaz, but okay. <laughs> but the Ashkenazic world started slichot yesterday, Sunday morning. And the Belzer Rebbe, it was on the news, he broke down crying in the middle of slichot. He broke down crying in the middle of slichot. Because of everything that's going on around the world today. You know, we need Yeshuot. 
it's becoming difficult. It's, it's becoming very, very difficult. You know, this past year, this, this year, not past, this year, we've lost so many tzaddikim. We, we, we've lost pillars. It's, it's incredible. Rav Chaim Kanievsky, Rav Shalom Cohen. These were pillars in one year. You know, and all the other innocent people. In just this past year. We really need Yeshuot and, and the terrorist attacks that are going on right now. It's, 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 it's just, just you can't even talk about. It's right before Rosh Hashanah. It's a time to take things very, very seriously. So Moshe Rabbeinu was telling Bnei Israel, HaKadosh Baruch has placed before you at HaChayim Tov. You need to be preemptive. Choose the Chaim and the Tov before the Ra starts. Before the problems start. Because once the problem starts, it's harder to get rid of. Make sure that those bad Gezerot never come out. Make sure that we will never need those Tikkunim. How do we do that? By, by preemptively doing things right, right now. Don't sit back and go, Shalom Tiyali. I'm fine. Everything's great. The world is fine. The world is not fine. It's not. We need to be in a much better place. Much better place. So I hope this Rosh Hashanah we could all, not just Rosh Hashanah, now. Now, we should all start thinking about the things that we want to change, make the changes in our lives now. Daven for those things now. Daven to pray the correct way now. Why wait for a need for tefillah? Let's put it that way. Why should we wait for a need for a tefillah? We should always be praying now. I heard an amazing story. So there's two families, two very religious families in Eretz Israel. I don't know the background of the story of these families, but they lived in a very bad neighborhood non-religious, completely Chiloni neighborhood. But both families, the father was a Rav and the mother was a Rabbitson. I don't know what they were doing, but they lived in those neighborhoods. Years later, one of these families, their children became all Talmidei Chachamim. All in the way of Torah and Mitzvot. The other family, their children went off to Derech, unfortunately. They went their own way. They left the Torah path. So they asked the Rav that, that had the children that, that stayed in the path of Torah and Mitzvah. They asked them, what did you do? How did you manage in such neighborhood that your kids still remained in Torah and Mitzvot and were not affected by the outside influences? I mean, it's, it's, it's natural. It's only natural. How did you do it? He said, from the time every child was born before having the child even was born. Every day I would cry three times a day in my tefillot. I would pray for my future children. And when they were born, I would pray three times a day and cry to HaKadosh Baruch Hu every day. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, help my children stay in your path. I cried every day. It wasn't easy. It's not easy. But that's being preemptive. That's making sure the problem doesn't arise. That's making sure the problem never happens so that you don't have to fix it. We have to pray for the things that we want in this world now before it goes away. That's what the Zer Shimshon today was about. We have to make it count before we need to make it count. We should only know, Bezrat Hashem, this year Bezrat Hashem, we should know only of smachot, and we should only be blessed with good blessings from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And this year and this upcoming year, Be'ezrat Hashem of Rosh Hashanah, should be a year of simcha, year of sason ve simcha, year of refua shelema for kol chole am Yisrael. It should be a year filled with nachat in our lives. From everything that we do, we should prosper in everything that we do. But hey, don't just take the blessings. It comes with work. It comes with work from us. We need to work on it. You can't just come one Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur to Bet Knesset and think, you up. Oh, 
Baruch Hashem. You know, this year I had a pomegranate. And the Yehirat son of the pomegranate is, may we be filled with mitzvot like a pomegranate. I'm filled with mitzvot now. I had, I had the entire pomegranate. I am filled with the 613 mitzvot. You know, you know, I had Lubia, now I have Zechut, <laughs> because I had beans. Do you understand how magical it is? Be more realistic, Zabu. Like magical beans. Right, like magical beans, exactly. <laughs> but it doesn't work that way. These are Simanim. We do these Simanim on Rosh Hashanah for it to give us energy to be able to do the right thing to have Zechut. To do the mitzvot, to have more mitzvot. You can't just do the simanim and expect it to happen. You're not flicking a finger like that. You know, it's not going to just, but ah, you had a pomegranate, Baruch Hashem. You know? <laughs> Imagine, someone's doing the mitzvot so correctly, you're going to like, you had pomegranate this year, I can tell. Look at you, look at you with all the mitzvot. It doesn't work that way. Baruch Adonai Le'olam, Amen ve'amen.